Hello everybody, it's Paul Nisa with the Raw Life Health Show and you know, I've been showing all these videos about people who have been healed from cancer and doctors, how to get healed from cancer. There's just so many different illnesses out there today. But this next person I'm going to have on the show is, this one's personal for me. This lady suffered from what I suffered from, inflammatory bowel disease. And we interviewed her and she's going to be talking today about healing from inflammatory bowel disease and she has an amazing book that I want everyone that knows somebody suffering from inflammatory bowel disease or if you're suffering from yourself you have to get this book you can either get it from her website but I also have it on my website rawlife.com uh, this lady Gingy uh, she knows her stuff there's there I think there's several different ways and situations you have to handle each situation independently uh, based on what's going on there's several different ways I have seen to heal uh, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, but the most common way and the first thing I'd recommend people do is get Gingy's book and follow her program. Uh, and I'm very sure you'll see a tremendous improvement. She also has other great books on her website and information and videos. So get to her website. I'll post it below the video right now. Now I wrote a book called he about healing inflammatory bowel disease, but it's out of print. And before I reprint it, I'm making some updates to it. And, and so it's not out there. So in the meantime, I am recommending everyone get Gingy's book because that is one book I recommend people have. Even if you get my book, get her book as well. It's that good and that important for people with inflammatory bowel disease. I'm also working on a website about this. And one of the things I do is if you're suffering from inflammatory bowel disease, it, it's, it's on my heart to, to help you or to talk to you. So if you want to contact me, you can go ahead and uh, I'll work with you on some ideas on how to get better. But first, I recommend you get Gingy's book and you try those things out and then we can talk a little bit more. Read her book. It's amazing. Here's the interview right now with Gingy. My name is Jeannie Patel Thompson. My website is listentoyourgut.com and I am a uh, expert on natural healing for digestive diseases. My books are sold in over 40 different countries worldwide. I've had newspaper and magazine articles published in the UK, the US, Australia. Um, I also formulate specific healthcare products for the inflammatory bowel disease market. These are products that I needed in my own healing journey that weren't available, so I had to go into production for them. So that's in a nutshell what I do, and where that came from was I healed myself of widespread Crohn's disease. I had it small intestine, large intestine, and at the point I left the medical treatment protocols, they suspected it had spread to my stomach as well. So I had a pretty bad case of it, and the doctors told me I'd be in and out of the hospital the rest of my life. I would never be able to work, I'd never be able to hold, have kids, and I went, hmm, not, I, that doesn't really appeal to me, no thanks. So I left the medical treatment protocols and I went searching, and it took me seven years to uh, figure out what worked, and then I threw it out there. People kept asking me, well, how can you be so healthy? So I put it in an ebook form and I threw it out there to about 200 people, and I said, just give me your feedback, because I'm not going to bother putting this into a book if it's something that only worked for me. So based on the feedback, that became my first book, which is also called Listen to Your Gut. And so I, I just sort of, everything's grown from there. The protocols have improved because now I have about 30,000 readers and I get a lot of feedback. So we've been able to improve a lot of the protocols, make them more powerful so they take a shorter amount of time, that type of thing. So that's basically where I've come from. Well, uh, prior to you getting diagnosed with uh, the Crohn's, how was your lifestyle and your diet up to that point? Oh, well, I was diagnosed at 16, so in utero, I was malnourished. In childhood, my mom knew nothing about nutrition, okay? So we would have processed meats, uh, processed cheeses, tons of sugar. I mean, basically, your standard American diet with junk food and all that crap all the time, that's what I ate. So that was, that was where I came from at, right up until diagnosis. Now, being uh, diagnosed at 16, you were still under the care of your parents to make your medical decisions for you. Uh, did what they wanted to do and you felt was right to do go along with each other? Yeah, because, see, at that point, I, I come from an entire family of medical doctors and pharmacists. Like, we had not even, none of us had heard of alternative health. 
I thought alternative health was for, you know, people who lived in the third world who couldn't afford the good stuff. So, you know, of course, my dad goes out, he gets me the top Crohn's colitis doctor in Canada. The guy heads up a national research team. I go full in, full confidence. Yeah, I'm going to be handled. And it was just every year I got sicker and sicker and sicker. So I was totally in line with that. And then when I decided this is not working, I need to go and find what works. Um, you know, by that time I was 20, uh, coming up to 20. So, and then I also left Canada and I went to Japan when I was 21. So I was out of the country for a lot of my experimentation anyway. And I was trying stuff, you know, I go to Zen monastery in Japan for six months and I try teas from the Philippines. And then I went to Europe and I was trying everything that was there. I was based in the UK. And so a lot of my experimentation was on my own anyway, but my parents had seen actually the medical system doesn't work. They knew that because my brother as well had been diagnosed with Crohn's. Um, so, and he'd already gone the surgery route and the whole bit. So they were fully cognizant that what m the medical world has to offer for these diseases, you know, just doesn't, doesn't work in the long term at least. Well, so what would you recommend? Because I deal with a lot of people that, that contact me, they've been diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease, like me and most likely you, maybe not because your, br your brother had it, but most people that get diagnosed never even heard of this until they get diagnosed. So they're totally lost already. And doctors, at least in the United States, say there's no connection between our diet and our health or our diet and inflammatory bowel disease. You and I know different. So where do you start off when somebody contacts you through your, your great website or through the phone and say, I've been diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, or ulcerative colitis, or one of the other many inflammatory issues of the, of the bowel. Uh, what do you first tell them and, and share with us uh, how you can help people? Well, the, there's, there's a couple of things. First of all, there's what the natural protocols are about. And on the second hand, there's where the person's at in their own healing journey. Because some people, you know, maybe they come from a holistic background they want to go full into the holistic healing and they have no reservations and they're of course your ideal person because they're ready to go, they're fully committed and they'll do whatever it takes. But then you get people who they're either coming in with a lot of fear or um, they've never done anything other than the medical system so they don't have a lot of confidence in the alternative methods. So the way I've arranged things in my books is that people can do whatever they're ready for. So if they're ready to do the whole program you're going to wean off your drugs and you're going to get the best results and your healing is going to happen the fastest. But for a lot of people, they need to stay on their drugs for a while because they're too scared and they just don't have the fluency with any kind of natural protocol. So for them, what they'll do is they'll maybe take something, like maybe their most, their worst symptom is diarrhea. Okay, like I get people, they're having 20 to 40 bowel movements a day, right? That's hell. You have no life. So they'll take that diarrhea and in my Listen to Your Gut book, I've arranged things according to symptoms. So they'll look up the symptom profile for diarrhea and they'll start implementing it. Now they're, oh, look, I'm getting good results. My diarrhea is, is calming down. Now it's, oh, now I'm down to three bowel movements a day. This is awesome. That then gives them the confidence to go through the rest of the protocol. So, but for someone who's coming in with Crohn's or colitis or diverticulitis, and on the homepage of listentoyourgut.com, I've put it, all the information on there. I've said it's an eight-step process. Here's what it is. If you have a severe form of the disease, okay, so you are to the point where you can't work properly or you've got intestinal bleeding, then step one is you have to rest the bowel because at that point, your intestines are so hypersensitive. They're so inflamed. There's not a lot you can do that is not going to trigger a flare because they're so hypersensitive. So step one is you rest the bowel. And the easiest way to do that is through what's something called an elemental, which is a liquid pre-digested diet. So it requires very little digestion. Within 20 minutes, it's into your bloodstream. So your whole digestive process gets a rest, gets to calm down, gets to you know downregulate all of the crazy stuff that's happening. Number two, you've got to get rid of the pathogens, okay? Bad bacteria, yeast, fungus, viruses. You've got to get rid of that stuff because all of that stuff is what's causing the ongoing infection and inflammation in your gut. Now, people say, oh, Crohn's and colitis start off as an infectious, you know, cause. And other people say, no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. 
by the time you get to the point where you've been through some medical treatment protocols, you've had a colonoscopy, you've got some infection going on in there. It's guaranteed because as soon as you know your intestinal lining starts to degrade, you're going to have some infection happen. So you've got to get rid of the pathogens. The third thing is you've got to repopulate the entire gastrointestinal tract with good bacteria because that leads to susceptibility in the first place and again that leads to ongoing inflammation and ulceration. Number four, you got to also heal that inflammation and ulceration. So just normalizing the gut flora for someone who's in you know, a serious disease state is not enough. You actually need the herbs and supplements that are going to heal the mucosal lining. And for some people, if they've got fistulas or they've got abscesses, it's already gone through the mucosal lining, okay? It's into tissue, it's into bone. You have to heal the inflammation and ulceration at those levels as well. Number five, you've got to resolve your nutrient deficiencies. Because if you were like me and came from a crappy diet in the first place, or you've had these diseases for any length of time, your digestion's been impaired, your absorption's been impaired, so you, you may be eating the most fabulous diet in the world. You may be taking a boatload of supplements, but if you're not absorbing them, your body can't use them. All right, so you have to take those in very specific forms that, again, can be you know absorbed and uptake very, very quickly to the bloodstream. Number six, you have to detox your living environment. So, and I take people, chapter four, and listen to your gut, I take them through their whole house. I go, what are you sleeping on? What are you cooking on? If you're cooking in tea fowl, you're, you're creating problems just through every meal that you eat. Are you using a microwave? Not a good thing. You gotta, you gotta get rid of your microwave. Go put it in the garage, things like that. Um, so I take you through the whole living environment. Number seven, you gotta heal the emotional contributors. So, and this is something that I'm really pleased is becoming more and more accepted, not just in the alternative communities, but in the medical communities, that the brain and the gut are absolutely inextricably linked. And so I don't know if you've seen, there's a book called The Second Brain, written by a medical doctor, which is basically talking about you know, the fact that there are more neurotransmitters in your gut than there are in your brain, okay? So when we are looking at gut diseases, we have to look at and heal the emotional components. And those could be traumas from your childhood. They could be um, you know, really unhealthy patterns of living. Like, are you someone who can never say no? So you meet everybody else's need and your own last, by which time you're exhausted and you're running your body on your adrenals. Like, there are a lot of patterns here that are emotionally based that contribute to chronic illness. And then last thing, number eight, again, this is if you've had um, you know, one of these diseases for, say, longer than six to eight months, your endocrine system is going to be unbalanced. So your hormones are going to be out of whack, okay? Most people will have some kind of thyroid problem or adrenal problem because that's just what happens with chronic illness. Your, your hormones get out of balance. So you have to you know, get your glandular system back in balance as well. And that's when you go, because we're not just talking about being disease-free, we're talking about full, vibrant health. We're talking about lots of energy. We're talking about you get to the point where you can miss a couple nights sleep and you're not you know, laid out on the sofa. So that's basically the, the, the steps in a nutshell. And like I said, if you go to my site, I go into each of those steps in depth so you can understand a lot more of what they're about. Well, it's wonderful, and I know it's work for people, and... Uh... Now, I know there are emotional things that sometimes keep people from healing, but how successful are you are in terms of the people that listen and follow your program step by step? I mean, are there some people that just begin and they're just not, they're just too far gone where it won't help? Or if everyone listens to your step, do they pretty much all show not just improvement, but complete healing? Or how, how is the statistics? Well, we don't have statistics in terms of if we ran a clinical trial and we had everybody there and we could gather data we don't have anything that hard um, but while all I have is feedback from people when they email me so what I've heard from people is um, let's say if you if let's say you have colitis okay which is is a milder Crohn's is sort of like the worst so colitis would be in the middle you've got colitis you've just been diagnosed 
you haven't gone on any of the prescription meds because those really damage your body, okay? That then takes longer to heal because you not only have to heal your original condition, you've got to heal all the damage caused by the drugs. So let's say you've just been diagnosed with colitis, you haven't taken any of the prescription meds yet, you come in and you're ready to go and you do everything. Um, I've heard a number of people heal themselves in six months, which is very quick for for this kind of damage, okay? This kind of damage is quite entrenched in the body. So six months is super quick. Um, I've had other people, they've had Crohn's disease for 30 years, okay? They've had surgeries, they've been on prescription meds for 20 of those 30 years. Um, they can get themselves off drugs and that takes about two years, okay? Because you've got a lot of stuff to heal. You've got a lot of damage and you've got, you know, again, the disease has gone quite systemic by that point. So these are not, there's no quick fix cures here because, you know, it's like cancer. People say, oh, he was fine and the next day he had cancer. No, cancer is a 10 year disease. You are, you are degrading, degrading, your body's holding it together. And medical diagnostics are not so good because they're focused on testing the blood. Well, the blood is the last place the body's going to show an imbalance. So it's the same thing with uh, Crohn's and colitis and diverticulitis and even IBS. These are things that have been going on often from childhood for people. You know, there's been abuse in the home. There's been massive antibiotic use, never followed up by probiotics. There's been, you know, your standard American disgusting diet. There's been all these things for years and years and years. So they do take time. And so, and I got an email from one guy once. So he'd been doing the medical protocols. He was in the hospital. He was down to 60 pounds. Okay, this is a man. And the doctors basically came to him and they said, you know what? We got nothing else. There's, we can't operate on you anymore. We don't have, we have just get your will in order. We're really sorry, but this is the facts, right? He finds my stuff. He gets my second book called the IBD remission diet, which is this elemental diet program, but it's combined with a lot of really healing uh, supplements and nutrients. He goes on that. I get an email for him. He says, guess what? This is where I was. I've gained 40 pounds. I'm out of the hospital. I'm getting my life back. So on that stage, we can say, well, these, these natural protocols, they work for people the med system's given up on. Like, they're really bad, and they've had these diseases for a very long time. They also work for people who've been following the med protocols for a long time. But then, as I said, it takes them longer to repair the damage as it does for someone who's coming in fresh. Great. Now, I want people to understand that are listening, especially if they're dealing with inflammatory bowel disease, just by going on your protocol and taking supplements is not a cure-all emotionally. You have to be in the right place. You have to believe it works. But also, a lot of times what I see is people try to add supplements, but they don't change their diet. And it is essential for people to change not only what they're eating, but how they're eating. And uh, one of your first steps is, is that, to rest the colon, which is so important. Uh, so I, I want people to remember that and realize that. But tell us about your step number, uh, your step number four, which is about healing inflammation and ulceration, uh, and some of the supplements. There's one called mucus heal, a mucus heal. How do you pronounce that? And tell us uh, all about that. That's mucosa heal, and that's actually one of the ones that I formulated myself because I looked at the ones that were available out there, and none of them were ideal. And I thought, well, instead of having to buy this and then mixing it with this and then adding it, why don't we just put everything all in together? So the mucosa heal has something called N-acetylglucosamine, N-A-G. And that is a substance that people have used. I've heard some people use it, just that one substance to wean off their prednisone. So it's, um, and you'll also hear that used for anything that involves connective tissue. Uh, so regenerating the knees or the joints or something. So it, it contains that. It contains uh, deglycerizinated licorice. And it's deglycerizinated because if you don't take that out, the licorice can spike your blood pressure. But when it's deglycerizinated, you don't get a raise in blood pressure, but you get all the benefits of the licorice. So licorice increases microcirculation in the cells of the gut. So of course, if you know anything about healing, the number one principle about healing is you have to get things moving. You have to increase blood flow. You have to mobilize the body's own healing resources. It has slippery elm and marshmallow root. So both of these 
um, have been used, you know, for thousands of years to soothe and coat mucous membranes. So you'll see them in teas for sore throats because they coat and they line the throat. Well, the tissue is the same in the throat as it is in the intestine. So we also take, we take those as well. So then when you take all these supplements and you put them together, you get a synergistic effect because they're all helping each other to work so they all work more effectively. So that's one of the things, and you can take that on an empty stomach. The other thing that I recommend is um, an amino acid called L-glutamine. So L-glutamine is not just the primary nutrient for the cells in the intestinal lining, but it's also one of the primary uh, proteins used for wound repair. And the great thing about L-glutamine is if you take it with food, it's just... Um, you know, it's, it's a repair agent, it's a nutrient, it, it helps with the ulceration inflammation. But if you take it on an empty stomach, it combats diarrhea because it causes a reabsorption of water from the bowel. And so it's a fabulous, I love it when supplements can, you know, get, get your bigger bang for your buck and do more than one thing at once. And L-glutamine is one of those. So you take it on an empty stomach and it gets your diarrhea um, way down or often completely resolved. Um, another one that I love is George's aloe vera juice. And it has to be George's. Don't try to substitute because aloe vera is often, the only thing you can actually substitute with is um, the actual powdered extracts. What's that one that's called and they sell it? It's like incredibly expensive. Uh, do you know which one I'm talking about? It's an aloe vera powder. No, I don't. Mm. I know there's a no. lot of I know there's a lot of aloe veras on, on the market that are garbage and they they're pretty yeah. much they're useless and uh, they have nice marketing behind them but they're useless. Yeah, and they contain they contain the allantoin which aggravates the gut. They um, contain preservatives. I mean, come on, you don't want to put a preservative into a sensitive gut. So George's has all of the irritants removed. It contains no preservatives, but it's powerful. So you, again, all this stuff you take on an empty stomach so that it can go directly to the mucosal lining of the intestine and heal it. Um, so those are some of the top supplements that people use. And then, you know, there's a bunch of others because let's say you're taking something like wild oregano or olive leaf extract, okay? Those get rid of the bad bacteria and the yeast, which heals inflammation and ulceration. But wild oregano is also anti-inflammatory. So there's a long history of them using it with burn patients directly, topically on the skin, which is kind of amazing to those of us who've taken wild oregano because you know it's like, ah, it's so spicy hot. You can't believe that it would be used for with burn patients, but it is a very powerful anti-inflammatory. So again, you get a synergy when you're on the protocols and you're taking these supplements together. There's a, there's a bigger bang for your buck happening there too. Definitely, and there's a lot of people that teach about healing inflammatory disease, but I don't recommend or endorse many of them, but you're one person I do because I know not only have you, you developed this great program that works, but you've personally went through the experience. And that says a lot because when you personally went through it, you know not only what it feels like physically, but emotionally you know that this is something that, that even though it's very popular in today's world, uh, people still don't know how to deal with, with the diagnosis and living with inflammatory bowel disease so can you talk a little about about that and you know just living with it and just how to get along and be confident that you will be better because when you're going through it it seems like your world is over oh it does it's like i the way i used to say it's like it's like you're being held in a third world jail cell and tortured every day like it was just i am not a good sick person i am for me to be ill it's sort of like the most fundamental loss of freedom there is like you might as well lock me up in a jail cell. And then because of all the pain and the physical agony, you, you're, you're literally being tortured is how I felt. And that was why when my doctor said that, well, this is going to be your life, I, I said, I'd rather die. I'll die or I'll heal myself. Okay, I'll die trying. But those are really my options because there's no way I'm living like this. So I, I totally get that. And an analogy, and I want to back up a bit because of what you said about my system. There is not a single thing that I recommend or that I sell in my health shop that I have not taken myself and a lot of the supplements my whole family is on. And that I deviated from that once in my life and I'll never do it again. 
So that's the thing. If it's in my health store, if it's in my books, I've taken it myself. And that's really important, especially during the period when I was healing. Okay. Now I've been completely drug and surgery free for about 23 years now. Okay. But while I was healing, you can take something that your naturopath or your Chinese doctor could recommend to you and it would help just about everybody else but when you have Crohn's or colitis you are so hypersensitive your body is in such a trigger state that all these supplements that are fine for everybody else are gonna throw you into a flare right and we know what a flare is like it's like dropping off a cliff it's awful it's horrible you can lose like 20 pounds in five days it's just crazy so the stuff that I recommend, number one, has been used by myself. By this point, because I've been doing this for 11 years, everything has been trial tested by like 10,000, 20,000 people with these diseases. So that's the main thing that happens with my books is people come in and they start using them and then they combine them. And I don't care if you buy your supplements from me, buy them from wherever you want, but just get the brand that I specify, right? But they'll get some advice from their naturopath or their Chinese medicine doctor and they'll start adding in their herbs and they'll wonder why it's not working and I'll say you know what you can't do that stick to what's in the program in the listen to your gut program when you're healed when you're stable that's when you want to test in all these other things because you'll have a foundation there that you can test that stuff without risking it throwing you into a flare so because these things have been well tested by you know tens of thousands of people we know they're safe um, so that's you know, another thing that's really important for people to keep in mind. I did, I had a guy, um, this is back when I used to do uh, personal consults. I don't do them anymore. I, I'm not, you know, with the FDA crackdowns and stuff, I can't legally give personal health advice. But before then, I had a consult with this guy. And he was one of these people who was having 40 bloody bowel movements a day. He is poor guy. He's like six foot four. He's in diapers. He's in diapers in bed. And his wife is changing his diapers around the clock. I mean, does life get any worse than that? And he couldn't get the diarrhea down. So I said, okay, go, what, what are you taking? What are you putting in your body? He went and he got all his supplements. In his supplements that were recommended by naturopaths or that he found on the internet from a friend, there were four different substances, all of which would cause diarrhea in a healthy person. So this is why we go, okay, you know what? Just don't take anything else. To answer your second question about hope and whatever, um, I think you have to get to a place where you either know that holistic healing works, so you're already oriented that way, because you know that holistic healing addresses the root cause. We're not, in the way I divide things up in my book, I have, okay, to get to the root cause of diarrhea is going to take some time. So in the meantime, here's what you take for the symptom. But this is not a healing. This is like you taking Imodium as a crutch to just slow down the diarrhea and to really know that distinction. So while you take this natural substance that alleviates your diarrhea and reduces your bowel movements, you got to be doing this that's healing the root cause of your diarrhea. But this is going to take longer, so let's just get you some relief. And, and because I've been through that myself, I have an awareness of that. It's If you tell someone, okay, well, I'll heal you, but you're going to be sick as a dog, laid out in bed for the next two months. How many people are going to be able to to go through with that? You know, and, and people have children. They can't. They can't be laid out for that amount of time. So that's sort of the balancing act that we go through. But the image that I give to people is here's your healing. Healing is not this flat linear line that just goes up straight and there's no there's no you know down bits or there's no anything. It's more like a spiral. Okay, so, but it spirals up. So even though it's not straight and you don't see this continual improvement, as you know, when you get a Herxheimer reaction, okay, so you're, you're taking something that causes a die off of the pathogens, all right? Um, Candida albicans releases 69 different toxins as it dies. Of course, you're going to feel sicker. So you're not actually going down even though it feels like you're going down, okay? So you're going to spiral. It's going to feel like, oh, I'm not so good of a pay. Oh, but I'm coming back up. And look, now I'm much healthier than I was here when I started. And that's, I think, what provides people with the motivation to keep going. And uh, knowing that there are people out there that, like you said, don't have the time because they have families and, they, and to do the natural cure sometimes takes a good amount of time. 
is there any circumstance, whether it's somebody's uh, disbelief that this might work or their, uh, their hesitation to give up the medical way, is there any situation where you would ever tell somebody, look, take the medicine, take the steroids until you've gotten over this inflammatory attack and then we'll heal and detox together once you're out of the, out of the, the inflammatory stage? Or would you completely in every situation avoid it? Um, well, as you said, there's going uh, to, and, and the key situation that comes to my mind with what you've said is, uh, let's say the person's in college and they got four months left and they want to get that degree paper. Okay. They can't take six months out. They're going to have to, you know, it's going to set them sure. back a long way. So in, in cases like that, and I've had parents contact me, I've said, you know what, it has to be your child's decision. Um, but it may be better for them to just stay on the drugs for the next four months, get through it, get their degree, and then say, okay, I'm going to take a year out now without pressurizing myself to go out and get this high-powered career right away to really focus on my healing. Um, and so that's where the balancing act comes in. And then I have a lot of people, because I have purposely, um, my stuff is very clearly natural, but I've tried to make things as accessible as possible. I have a lot of medical doctors who put themselves on my protocol. I have PhD scientists. You can see, you can see when they comment on my blog because they're just like they post this amazing information. So I have a lot of people from within the medical scientific world who are using my protocols. And so I keep it accessible. And the way that I do that is to say, you do it at your own pace. Because like I said, sometimes like the example I gave about someone use starting with diarrhea and having to see some good results first. You don't have to come in here and go, okay, I believe I'm committed. No, try it. But why should you believe in it if it doesn't work? Test it first. If it works for you, go, oh, all right, I'll do the next thing. And go slowly. Just know that it's going to take you longer than if you were to come in fully committed. But who cares, right? It's your pathway. So, you know, for a lot of people, they will do a lot of my stuff for 6 to 12 months as they're gradually weaning off their medication and they'll, you know, they'll get off, you know, one drug first and they'll leave, and then they'll some of them hang on to their prednisone for quite a while because psychologically whenever they've gone off their prednisone in the past, the disease has come roaring back. So they have to come off that very slowly and they have to meanwhile be building a foundation of health to support them so that when they do finally wean off, they're not going to get too much of a kickback. Some people don't get any kickback at all, but some people will get a resurgence of symptoms because that pregnizone is really screwing up your adrenal gland. And when you take it away, there's again, there's you're going to suffer some symptoms as your body you know, has to recalibrate itself, you got to restart adrenal functioning, and the inflammation that was being masked by the pregnisone is now not masked. So even though for them it feels like they've gone backwards, well, I didn't have any bleeding and now I've got bleeding. No, this was always there. This inflammation, this ulceration was there, but you weren't seeing any blood because the pregnisone was masking it. The pregnisone was altering the tissue. Now you've taken it away. The condition that has always been there is now evident to you. So that's a bit of understanding that people have to go through. And as I said, there's absolutely no problem with them taking it at their own pace. Sure. And you and I, knowing uh, the, the frustration that comes along with inflammatory bowel disease, one of the things I find often is, uh, I don't want to say lack of patience, but you know, mm. people will stick to a program for so long, but they don't realize it's taken them years to build up to where they've gotten themselves in a situation. And if they don't see a, a response or even a complete cure in a couple of months, if not even a couple of weeks, they kind of throw it out and they just run to the doctor. What do yeah. you tell people like that? You see, that's the hard thing because we've been trained literally from birth by our medical system, pop a pill and it disappears. And that's become our norm. We're like, okay, I took the supplement, it should be gone. And there's not this awareness of what you just said, that healing is a process. And when you've got a systemic serious disease, there's definitely a time factor involved in healing from that because the dis-ease, the damage to the body has gone through several systems by this point. You're not just looking at, you know, skin. You know, you're looking at skin, you're looking at hormones, you're looking at bacterial flora. To implant a good flora 
in your bowel, okay? Like let's say you didn't get it from birth. Let's say you weren't breastfed, you were cesarean section, you were given antibiotics. When have you ever had a good flora? Probably never. So that alone is going to take you, uh, you know, a year or two to get something really foundational that could, you know, withstand, say, a food poisoning event or something or, you know, traveling to a third world country. These things, that, these things take time. Yeah, and one of the things that I find not, I don't want to use the word upsetting, but I'll say, you know, discouraging is, is, is I know that your methods and, and the natural way works to help colitis and Crohn's, but people are, care so much about the way they look. And one of the biggest complaints I get is, but I lost so much weight. And I try to tell them, look, the weight will come back when you're healthy. <laughs> Just get better now and the weight will come back. But so many people are concerned more about how they look than how they feel almost. How do you address that? Well, I have a bit of, I think, I have a bit of a different take on that to you. Because from my experience, it depends what we're talking about. about if we're talking about underweight like malnutrition, malnourished, in my experience, that is not a good thing. Because when the body falls below, you know, a normal or healthy body weight, and I'm not talking about according to the charts, I'm talking about according to, you know, nourishment, like what are your albumin levels, what are your protein levels sitting at? When the body falls below those levels, the body loses the ability to heal itself. So that's why the elemental diet is often a crucial turning point in people's healing because until they get their weight up above the malnourished marker, they can't heal. Their body can't use those supplements. And that's why the doctor said to that guy in the hospital, the body can't even, the drugs don't even work when the body gets to that point. So having, and, and it's, in a way it's counterintuitive because an elemental diet is about the most processed thing you can put into your body, okay? It's like there's nothing whole food in an elemental diet. It can't be because it has to be boom into the bloodstream. It has to not require digestion. So you're looking at whey protein isolate, okay? There's no other proteins there. The casein, everything else that's highly allergenic has been taken out. Um, there's the carbohydrates. There's no whole grains in there. The carbohydrates are broken down to maltodextrin, which is a glucose polymer, all right? This, we use stevia and we use a little of, um, amount of uh, natural fructose as the sweeteners. There's nothing in there that requires digestion. So for a healthy person, they would never want to take that product. That would not be something that they would want to put into their body because a healthy person should be eating whole foods, should be eating raw foods, should be eating very nutrient-dense foods, but when you're that ill, your body cannot handle it. So you have to give the bowel the rest by having the nutrients go boom into the bloodstream. People in that state can't even handle juicing. Juicing, um, you know, vegetables and stuff will throw them into a flare. It will cause them terrible diarrhea. There are a small percentage who can and who can use that to heal. And if they can, that's great because personally, I think that's a better way to heal. Uh, but again, we're talking about such severe states of hypersensitivity that you have to first nourish the body first. They need to get enough protein because protein is what's used to repair all those wounds. And if you're not getting protein and it's not booming into your bloodstream because you've lost the ability to digest it, how are you going to heal? I saw you talk about in one of your videos that was years ago about the raw milk diet when you first tried that and how mm -hmm. it created constipation. Uh, is one of your uh, stages of diets, constipation is usually not a, a common sign later for uh, inflammation. Maybe it's something that leads up to it, uh, but is one of the stages in your book talk about constipation and how to deal with it? Yeah, you know what? Constipation actually is such a complex thing that I wrote a second, a completely separate book to deal with that. It's called Listen to Your Colon, and it's the complete natural healing guide to constipation because there is a completely different set of factors that can be involved with that. And often, you know, with that, you get, you have to get more into dietary, um, you know, things that are different from the dietary recommendations for someone healing from Crohn's or colitis. So that, yeah, became a separate book. And the raw milk diet, it's because the calcium is so high. 
So, and I did that diet, I did it on the fly. And then I did the teleseminar with Jim Emke, who's been doing raw milk diets for 30 years. And I really should have reversed that order because he was like, oh my God, you can't just drink raw milk. You have to add in magnesium. Or for him, he likes to add in, you know, a psyllium supplement to help keep things moving in the bowel. Otherwise, yeah, constipation is a high result of the raw milk diet. But see, raw milk, again, if people can tolerate that, Rather than taking Absorb Plus, which is the elemental diet product that I formulated, I tell them, go get the raw. Raw goat's milk is usually the most easily tolerated because the protein is the most similar to human breast milk or raw cow's milk. And if you can tolerate those, definitely take those. Because again, we're talking about unprocessed, whole, fresh, raw foods. A lot of people, I have, I have customers in Singapore and Slovakia and I have customers all over the globe. They can't get raw milk from any kind of clean supplier. So, but if you can, and you can tolerate it, because again, in the raw milk, there's still the whole milk protein, but it contains the enzymes you need to digest that. So many people are fine with that. And if they can tolerate it, do that first. If you can't, fine, go to the Absorb Plus, go to the 100% Elemental product. Do you ever run into anybody going uh, in an extreme case of inflammation from IBD? Uh, reversing it so much so where they actually get constipated afterwards? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can because, well, and, and it can be for me, and actually I am one of the examples, but it wasn't from the healing of the inflammation. It was because from all of the medical interventions and the repeated ulceration and scarring before I figured out how to heal myself, I had a buildup of a lot of scar tissue in my rectum okay which is fine as long as you have loose bowel movements or diarrhea you don't notice it but when your stool starts getting healthy and the thing for me is I got to a place in my healing journey I could not even induce diarrhea which blew my mind because I had you know loose bowel movements for you know 15 years or whatever and purposely kept them loose because of this problem and then it's like okay well there's nothing you can do you can drink two, three cups of coffee, you're not having a bowel movement because it's just too healthy. Your stool are going to be formed. They're going to be normal size. Now the stool can't get out. Now what are you going to do? So that then has led to developing a protocol for actually dissolving the scar tissue in the rectum. And we've been doing some really exciting things with that. And we've had some, some of our testers have had, you know, fantastic results from that. So yeah, the healing process in itself can cause, you know, you go, okay, and I'm normal bowel movements and form stool, but oh, now I can't poo anymore. Now what am I going to do? So yeah, there's, there's definitely a bit of, you know, and that's why this is ongoing. This is why, sure. okay, I've been drug surgery free for 20 years. Why am I still in this field? Why am I, why is there still work for me to do? Well, because there is, and then there's, you know, we came up with a wonderful protocol for perianal abscess and fistulas, which I personally never suffered from, but so many people did that I got together with my brother, who's a medical doctor, which is awesome because he gets to see the patients. He gets to, you know, he's done some of the surgeries. So I go to him, okay, what, what's happening with this? Tell me structurally what's happening with a fistula with an abscess where is it going is there an actual pathway like what are we looking at and then I can get a really good idea and we can come up with a protocol and that's up on my blog for anybody just go to listen to your gut.com type in fistula or perianal abscess it'll pull it up for you and then the fantastic thing about having the feedback, so I throw that, it's a wild oregano fistula syringing protocol. So you're syringing the wild oregano up through the fistula to the site of infection, which is something the medical protocols can't do. They can't get to that site of infection because it's walled off from the digestive tract. So all the oral antibiotics don't really have much of an effect. So I throw it out there. And people use it, and they're like, this is awesome, this is great. And then this one woman, bless her, because I'd also been going, you know, I'm looking at infrared lasers because, you know, they're really, they're really like, whoa, there's something there. Let's, let's, so I'm putting out blog posts, you know, investigating infrared lasers. She goes out and buys one, uses it on her son who's had a fistula that would not heal for six years, and that thing heals in, you know, less than 50% of the normal amount of time because she's combined the wild oregano fistula syringing protocol 
with the use of an infrared laser to stimulate direct tissue healing. And so now that's on there. So we go, oh, that's awesome. Let's make that part of the protocol. So this is the exciting thing about it and, and being able to have things like the blog or, you know, I have an email address that's up there all the time where people can write in and to be able to get this back and forth. Because if we all have that mindset that, you know what, we are all capable of connecting to our body wisdom and listening to our gut, listening to what our tissues and our cells are telling us, and we're going to get ideas and then let's share them and let's make the protocols better. Because who cares if I have a protocol that's worked really well for 10 years and heals people in two years? If you come up with a way to make that protocol take one year or six months, why wouldn't we want to change that? Why wouldn't we want to get that out to everybody? Sure. Uh, is your protocol for the, the constipation on your website as well for people that want it? Uh, if they go to listen to your gut and they click on um, the LTYG shop, that takes them to all the books and DVDs and everything that I have, and it'll be in the list of books there. Wonderful. Or yes. they can go to healconstipation.com because it's on that site too. Wonderful. Uh, give us a list of your websites that you, where people can go to learn more about all this great information. And uh, if anyone's dealing with inflammatory bowel disease, I know a lot of people who have been teaching about it over the years. But your site is one I definitely recommend to put at the top of the list. I send people there, so please give that information out to people now. Thank you, Paul. It's it's really basic. It's listen to www.listentoyourgut.com, and that's the portal site. Everything that I do feeds out of that. So if you go there, I've got purposely got tons of free stuff. I've got free reports, teleseminars, videos, podcasts. I've loaded it up because my ideal customer is somebody who's already tried a bunch of stuff first and is ready to do holistic healing and you know then they can marshal all their healing forces behind it so I try to give as much stuff away for free as I can any of my books they have a one-year guarantee I'll pay your return shipping so there's no cost to you to try anything because if it doesn't help you I don't want your money right so that's the way I've set things up and then, as I've said, on my blog, at the bottom of every single blog post, and use the keyword search on there. It says, enter your question or problem. It'll all, you know, 10 to 1, I've already blogged about it, and there'll be a ton of information for you. And then at the end of the blog, you can post a question for me, because that's where I can answer questions. I can answer questions in a public forum that are not specific personal health advice. So, Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, this is just great information, and uh, I want people to, to find you and, and, and use your, your great research and your work because I know it definitely works. In closing, uh, I would love to have you on the show in the future, but is there anything you want to say to people here that are dealing not only with inflammatory bowel disease but all different types of diseases because I know you have a lot of good personal experience and you could help them? I think, I think the thing to keep in mind is just – and we actually did had quite a bit of discussion about this on one of my blog posts recently, is the balance between listening to your gut, listening to your body wisdom, and doing your research. Because a lot of times when we think we're listening to our own gut, other things can be getting in the way, right? Like maybe there's a product that's been really hyped, and so it's caught our visionary component of ourself. And so we're like, yes that's the miracle, that's going to heal me. And you think you're listening to your gut, but you're really being caught up with a lot of other factors like fervor and the energy that surrounds that. And if you don't balance it with the research, with the hard science, and this is why I say to people, what's in the product? If your product label is not going to give me every single ingredient, I'm not touching it. So in this, it's an exciting time for us right now in the natural health world because there's a lot available there's a lot of people in, in this field who are trying to help people, but if you don't balance it with your research and you don't balance it with the hard facts, you're at risk. And so I just want to throw that out there, you know, to, to use your intuition, you know, get excited about things, connect to your body wisdom and balance it with the science, balance it with the research, because that's also what's going to protect you from stuff like this. Uh, well, thank you so much for sharing that information. And it's uh, again, I want to encourage everybody to get to your website 
And, uh, you know, you're doing great work, and uh, I share the same passion with you to help everyone. And I want everyone to know, inflammatory bowel disease, you don't have to run to the doctor and listen to what they say. And you can be healed naturally by letting your body do the job it was created to do when you give it what it was meant to have. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today on the show. And uh, we'll, everybody post your comments and questions below the video, and, uh, and we'll see you again soon. So thank you very much. All right, everybody, there it was. That was Gingy. I told you her information. Wow. I mean, I didn't know Gingy back when I was suffering from inflammatory bowel disease when I first got into this. But if I did, I think it would have been much more easy physically, but also emotionally, because I would have known somebody is there who understands and knows. And me particularly, uh, I wrote a book called Healing Inflammatory Bowel Disease, but it's out of print. And I'm reworking on the book. And until it comes out again, this is the book I'm recommending. And this is her site I'm recommending. So thank you, Jindy, for being a guest today. If you have any comments or questions, post them below the video. And until then, have a great day and a great raw life. Brighten up your life